Hi guys, welcome to this video. I am your quantitative ability tutor Kasturi Sanup. Guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about speed, distance and time. So this is the fifth or fourth time I am taking the revision of speed, distance and time. We have studied speed, distance and time, the basics. We have studied it in the context of trains. We have studied it in the context of boats and streams. But this is a different kind of questions that I wanted to take and these questions are going to ease your life because in this particular questions we are going to discuss few important shortcuts that you can apply and that you must be aware of. So let us start this video. Guys, it is very common phenomena that in any entrance exam you might be asked to find out the average speed. And most of you till now you all are aware that average speed uh, is not going to be equal to the arithmetic average. One speed plus the other speed divided by two. No, that is not how you calculate average speed. In fact, if at all you want to calculate average speed, you have to calculate the total distance first and then divide by total time. So based on the speeds that you are given, you have to find out the total distance, total time and then divide one, one another. Use speed equal to distance upon time uses formula and finally arrive at the average speed. So yes, this is quite a lengthy process. You can skip that if you know this particular formula. The average speed is given by 2 into the product of the two speeds divided by the sum of the two speeds and this formula can be used only if your distance is constant. So when a question says that a guy is traveling from A to B at a particular speed and he's returning back from B to A at a particular different speed, find out the average speed, then yes, the distance has remained constant. Only the speed is changing. So you can use this formula. Uh, you can use this formula only when the distance is constant. So please remember guys, this formula can be used only when the distance is constant. So understand that. So now we have to find out the average speed really easy. We are given the two speeds. So my V1 is 60. My V2 is 40. He is traveling 24 kilometers. I'm least concerned about that. I'm not going to use it. My average speed is going to be 2 into 60 into 40. 2 into the product of the two speeds divided by the sum of the speeds, which is 40 plus 60, which is 100. And I get... 2 into 6 is 12, 12 into 4 is 48. 48 kilometers per hour is my average speed. I could find out this answer within seconds. That is because I know the formula. So please guys, by heart this formula, this is a very easy one. In fact, it's very easy to remember as well. Now, my, many of you might ask me, but what if the time is constant? So one guy for 10 minutes, he is traveling at one particular speed. For other 10 minutes, he is traveling at other particular speed. Guys, remember speed is equal to distance upon time. So speed is directly proportional to distance. Whenever we have time constant, all we do is we consider it as a normal speed, normal average and we just find out the normal arithmetic average. Because we have a direct proportional relationship, a direct relationship between speed and distance. So here I have time as constant. My t is constant. So I can find out the average speed as 60 plus 40 upon 2. All I do is I take the average of the speeds like we do, like we do for regular averages. So this can be framed as one of the questions. When is the speed, when is the average speed a regular arithmetic average of the two uh, uh, speeds? So that is when your time is constant. So here I have the answer as 50. So 50 kilometers per hour is going to be his average speed. Now let us see another, another formula, another kind of a question. Walking at a speed of 5 kilometers per hour, a man reaches his office 6 minutes late. Walking at a speed of 6 kilometers per hour, he reaches 2 minutes early. So what do we have here? We have two sets of speeds as well as the time. So we have speed 1 which is 5 kilometers per hour. So when he is walking 5 kilometers per hour, he is reaching late by 6 minutes. So he is reaching at on t plus 6. When he is walking at 6 kilometers, now he has increased his speed, he is reaching 2 minutes early. 
so i have to find out the distance so guys remember remember this formula in fact this is just a derivation of speed equal to distance upon time so all i have to calculate is distance so i have to multiply speed and time what i am going to do is instead of multiplying it now i have two speeds so i am going to take the product of my speeds so i am going to have 5 into 6 the product of the two speeds but then i am going to divide it by the difference between the two speeds so when i calculate the difference between the two speeds can i take a negative value can my distance ever be negative no my distance is not going to be negative so i am going to ignore the negative value i'm just going to take the modulus of the difference so i get the value as 1 because 6 minus 5 is 1 and i am going to take instead of taking the time i am going to take up two times here i am going to take the difference between the two times so in one case he is reaching 6 minutes early and in the other case he is reaching 2 minutes late which means that the difference between the time is actually 8 so the correct distance is going to be but guys again remember this is an 8 minutes so i have to divide it by 60 because my uh, speed was in kilometers per hour so don't forget to divide it by 60 otherwise you will get some big random number as the distance value so here i have 10 this i have 2 and this one have 4 so the correct answer comes out as 4 kilometers if you go by the traditional method you will be banging your head because this is going to take such a long time so remember this formula we are going to use this formula a number of times yes we are going to use it right away when a person cycled at 10 km per hour he arrived at his office 6 minutes late so yes we have a set of speed given 10 km he is arriving 6 minutes late he arrived 6 minutes early when he increased his speed by 2 km per hour so he is now traveling at 12 km per hour and he has arrived 6 minutes early so we have the time difference as 12 12 minutes so which comes as 12 upon 60 hours and we have the difference between the speeds as 2 so i know my speed equal to distance upon time i have to find out the distance here so distance is nothing but speed but again i have two speeds so i'm going to take the product of the two speeds and i'm going to divide it by the difference between the speeds into my time so my time difference is 12 upon 60 i get the value as 12 so the correct answer here is 12 kilometers the distance from his office to the starting from the starting point is 12 kilometers let's solve another application let's solve this problem a man walks a certain distance in certain time okay now we are dealing in certainty we are not given anything if he has gone he had gone 3 kilometers per hour faster so let us assume that my speed is s the normal speed is s had he gone 3 kilometers per hour faster he would have taken 1 hour less than the scheduled time okay if he had gone 2 kilometers per hour slower so he is going 2 kilometers per hour slower sorry i have s minus 2 he would have been one hour longer on the road all right so he is going to take one hour extra the distance is so guys the distance is going to remain the same i have my formula for speed as speed equal to distance upon time the distance is going to remain the same so if i use the previous trick of finding distance then i get my distance as the there are two speed one is the original speed and he is going to reach at the original time which is t so here i have if i just use the first case this is just for, for the case 1 i have my distance which is equal to the product of the speeds which is s plus 3 into s because my second speed is s divided by the difference between the two speeds which is 3 into the time difference which is 1 and my case 2 is going to have the value of my d which is eventually going to be equal is equal to s minus 2 into s upon 2 because the difference is 2 into 1 because again the time difference is 1 
so let us solve it now i just have one variable which is s so when i solve it i get my ss also gets cancelled here i have 2s plus 6 is equal to 3s minus 6 so the value of my s comes out as 12 kilometers per hour i have found out the value of s so let me put it here in this particular equation and i get the value of my d so s is 12 kilometers per hour 12 plus 3 is 15 15 into 12 divided by 3 so the distance is going to be 60 kilometers solve it pretty early right let's see the next one if a train runs at 70 kilometers per hour it reaches its destination late by 12 minutes so here we have the speed one is 70 kilometers per hour and it is reaching 12 minutes late if it runs at 80 kilometers it is late by 3 minutes. So come on. Now here again we are asked to find out not the distance but the correct time. Okay. Even to find out the correct time we need to find out the distance once. So let us find out the distance here in this case guys. Distance is nothing but the product of my speed which is 70 into 80 upon the difference between the two speeds which is 10 into what is this? It is 9. 9 minutes it is minutes remember to divide by 60 so i have the distance as 21 into 4 which comes out as 84 so the distance is 84 kilometers i have got the distance now look how i find out the time so with i have the i have this formula speed equal to distance upon time i am asked to find out my time so my time is nothing but distance upon speed my distance is 84 and my speed is 70 i can find out my t so the value of my t comes out as not actually my t because if at all i use 70 as my speed then it is reaching its destination late by 12 minutes. So this is actually t plus 12 upon 60. Because t is my original speed. So I had assumed t to be my original speed. So it is reaching late by 12 minutes. So I cannot ignore this fact. If I am using my speed as 70, then I have to add 12 upon 60 to my t. Because I have to find out the original value of the original correct time. So, my correct time is nothing but 1.2 minus 0.2. So, the correct time is going to be 1 hour. So, if at all it is running at a normal speed S, then it is going to take 1 hour to reach. The correct time of the journey is 1 hour. Now, let us see the next problem. Now this problem is related with trains and it is related with the concept of relative speed. So what do I have? I have relative speed is equal to the total distance which means the sum of the train or the sum of the two objects. So I have sum of two objects, length of sum of the length of two objects divided by time taken to cross each other. So time taken to cross. Right. Now a train is passing two person walking in the same direction. Now the person's length is going to be very small. What is my length? If I measure my length, it is going to be very small. So I can very well neglect that. And the length that I have to consider here is the train's length. So the distance that is going to be there is equal to the length of the train. Now two persons are walking in the same direction at the speed of 3 kilometers and 5 kilometers. And a train is passing them in 10 seconds and 11 seconds respectively. We have to find out the speed of the train. Let us assume that the speed of the train is x. Then now both of them, the train and those people, they are walking in the same direction. So I have relative speed which is 3 minus, which is x minus 3. So x minus 3 
and I have into the time taken to cross. So which is 10, 10 seconds. I can very well convert it into R. But why do I need to do that? Because anyway, it's going to get cancelled. The conversion is going to get cancelled. Is equal to 11 into X minus 5. So I solve for X and I get the value as 55 minus 30 which comes out as 25. So the value of the speed of the train is 25 kilometers per hour. Now let's have a look at the second problem. In this case, two people, they are walking in the opposite direction of that of the train. So here instead of x plus 3, I have to do, I have to add it. So I have x plus y. And the second is going to be x plus 10. So 6 seconds and the second one is 5 seconds. So when I solve, I get the value of x as 30 and this becomes 50. So the value comes out as 20. So the correct answer is the speed of, of the train is 20 meters per second. So have a look once at the con conversion also, if at all, uh, all the other options they are given in kilometers per hour, then you have to convert this 20 meters per second into kilometers per hour. So let's go to the next one. A train starts from Delhi at 4 p.m. and reaches Ghaziabad at 5 p.m. While another train star B starts from Ghaziabad at 4 p.m. So we have Delhi here and we have Ghaziabad here. So one train is starting from Delhi, the other train is starting from Ghaziabad. <clears throat> the one which is starting from Delhi, it is starting at 4 p.m. and it reaches Ghaziabad at 5 p.m. So it is taking one hour to reach Ghaziabad. The other train, it is starting at 4 p.m. and it is reaching it after 1.5 hours to Delhi. So the other train is a bit slow. Now that these two trains, they are going to cross each other and what is going to be the time when they are going to cross? So the meeting time is given as the product of the two times taken divided by the sum of the two times. So here, first train or A train is taking one hour to travel. So 1 into 1.5 divided by the sum of the two times, so which comes out as 2.5. So I have 1.5 upon 2.5 which is nothing but 15 upon 25, that comes out as 3 upon 5, which is 0 0.6. So, these two trains, they are going to meet after 0 0.6 hours. So, 0 0.6 hours is nothing but 0 0.6 into 60, which comes out as 36 minutes. So, the meeting time is going to be 4.36. You have solved this question within few seconds if you know this that the meeting time is nothing but product of the time taken into the uh, sum div divided by the sum of the two times. So guys with this was the last problem. Yes with this particular problem I have ended uh, this video of time distance and speed. Please be thorough with time distance and speed because this is an important topic. So see you in the next video. Stay static. Stay tuned and stay studying. Wish you all the best. Thank you.